This video will tell you about how to do mini crush bifurcation stenting technique in a few simple steps. This video is especially good for fellows in training or just out of training. This is a must watch video for them. First, I should give you a background. There are three types of bifurcation lesions where one should start with planned two stent technique. These are visually or physiologically significant side branch lesion. Number two, significant diameter of the side branch lesion at least 2.5 millimeter or 2.25 millimeter. Dissection or plaque shift leading to flow compromise after pre dilatation with balloon. So here are the few steps. First, wire the lesion which is more difficult to wire. So usually a side branch lesion is more difficult to wire. Once you wire this, put another wire in the main branch. Once you have wired these, try to use this wire as the more supportive wire. Bring a compliant balloon if you are using a 6 French guide to this wire. Bring another balloon, preferably NC, on this wire. Inflate this balloon, which is the side branch balloon, first and then inflate this balloon after that. Once both balloons are inflated, deflate and then reinflate for first kissing balloon. Pre-dilatation is extremely important. Pre-dilate first the side branch and then do the kissing balloon. After this step, remove the side branch balloon. The balloon is removed. Once the balloon is removed, you can bring a stent on this wire. Have the proximal marker hanging in about 2 to 3 millimeter inside the main vessel. Next step is to dilate this with the stent balloon. After the stent is deployed, you inflate the main branch balloon to crush this side. Once this side is crushed, you remove the main branch balloon. It is extremely important to remove the wire when you are crushing this stent because the wire can get stuck in these struts. It is also important to look at and take an angiogram before crushing this stent. If there is any dissection in this area, you should cover that with another stent prior to crushing this stent because then it will be very difficult to get the balloon or the stent in that place. Stent. After crushing the side branch, bring the stent on the main branch and inflate this stent. Once this is inflated, this side will be crushed and there will be a carina that will be created. After this step, put a wire down through the distal strut. It's easier to get through the distal strut. Sometimes it's not visible, but try to get through the distal strut. Once you are through the distal strut, you can bring balloons on these wires, preferably NC balloons, but sometimes it's difficult to get the NC balloons. So you can always choose a non NC and an NC balloon on one of the wires. And you do the final kissing stent inflation. The important thing with this is that 
what I tend to do is that I inflate the side branch stent first or the balloon first and then I do the main branch after that and then finally I do a final kissing balloon stenting uh, inflation. If you want to learn more about other types of bifurcation techniques or reverse bifurcation techniques, please click on the next video or leave a comment below if it is not available. I'll be more than happy to help you with the videos to understand different bifurcation techniques. Thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I will be uploading at least one or two videos every month with the different stenting techniques or help with some of the techniques that are already in place. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Now I must tell you that this is a modified mini crush technique. In modified mini crush technique, we use an NC balloon in the main branch to crush the side branch stent. In the classic mini crush technique, you use a stent to directly crush the side branch stent. The balloon should be always covering the whole stent area. If it is not covering it, there might be difficulty to advance the balloon or the stent across this small narrowed area. So it's very important to have the balloon or the stent present when you are inflating the side branch stent. It's also important to mention here that the classic crush technique had this area of the stent hanging much higher and much into the main branch stent. This was advised not to be um, great for this area and a stent thrombosis can happen in this area because of that. In mini crush technique, it is important to look at at least in two shots prior to inflating the stent in the side branch. The reason for that is that sometimes this crina can be missed. Since in mini crush, you only have one to two millimeters of stent inside the main branch. Sometimes it can slide forward depending on the respiration or blood flow.